Welcome to our fireside chat with Gojek's president, Andre. Good to have you. Thank you. Let me start off maybe with a little bit of a history of our partnership that we had with Gojek. As Allianz Group and Allianz Indonesia, we started with Gojek in 2016 with our first corporation. What we did was we offered health insurance for the drivers of Gojek. It's a full-on health product with inpatient and outpatient, 24-7 medical assistance and online. The premium is 17 cents per day per person, and it's being directly deducted from the GoPay wallet. So it's a highly innovative, tailored product for the Gojek partnership. That was a starting point. From there, we moved on in offering insurance for the electronic devices, of uh, both the employees of Gojek and the drivers, and then for the full spectrum of insurance services. Which then led us, after the foundation of Allianz X, which I did in 2016, end of 2016, we thought also about doing our first investment from the Allianz X Venture Capital Fund in Southeast Asia, which then was Gojek. So since April this year, we also partners on the cap table and from there, we are moving on with exploring the region together. So let me ask you, Andre, what is your view on our partnership, first of all? And secondly, how do you see financial services evolving in the region? And what will be the role Gojek wants to play in that? Sure. Um, so hi, everyone. So we were uh, actually super excited with the partnership, you know, going back to about two or three years ago, even before the investment. Because for the first time, a lot of our drivers, which has no track record or financial history, if you may, be able to actually tap into products, uh, rev revolutionized products such as uh, insurance to actually help them in their managing their daily life and families as well. So that was a really good beginning, and uh, the you know kind of the pouring emotions of the drivers were really, really you know seen uh, in a big way, and because they are. They felt safe, right, in, in, a, in the words of Eduardo earlier. Uh, and it's the first time they'd be able to tap into that, especially in a country where some of the, uh, you know, um, medical types of coverage is not well established yet. So that, that is actually a really good beginning. Uh, and then when the kind of investment happened, that we accelerate certain initiatives, uh, then we, can, we start to see how we decouple a lot of the processes of some of these financial services product and where we can actually contribute and where uh, will Allianz be contributing. And that actually opens up a lot of opportunity because for, you know, for one thing, we are, we are actually a very good uh, user acquisition channel given the 20 million plus of active users in our platform and millions of drivers and merchants in our platform. Uh, we do, you know, for once as well, for the first time as well, a lot of them uh, has a financial history because of the GoPay wallet, a lot of the transactions that they're using on transport, food, you know, buying purchases of things, and started to build some track record or you know, uh, a financial data, which hasn't existed before, right? Because mo many of them doesn't have bank account, have never done transactions, uh, and uh, you know, being bankable in some sense, and and therefore, you know, there's roles and kind of capabilities that we can contribute towards the partnership. But having said that, we, we are a consumer internet platform. We're not a financial services play, mm. uh, player. So finding a partner such as Allianz, who's op very open-minded, to also decouple you know, certain things that you guys may have done in the past, and then collaborate together to create something that is special in some sense, right? Something special is not everything, you know, it's not always have to be a miracle, right? Yes. Even, you know, like how do you actually reduce the friction on uh, onboarding, KYC, you know, uh, whitelisting users that will instantly get a lot of that product? Uh, how do you actually manage risk? Even payments, you mentioned earlier that drivers just uh, get deducted about 17 cents uh, a day through the GoPay wallet. It's th that convenience, every little you know, uh, effort to reduce that friction has actually been you know, the greatest outcome out of this collaboration. Now going forward, we are so keen to see more opportunities, you know, uh, going a little bit more micro as well, 
we, we've talked about, you know, how do you actually create event-based insurance products that kind of cover, again, the friction of, of potential, uh, you know, losses or a friction of potential uneasiness, again, uh, getting back to Eduardo's uh, uh, words earlier, uh, that could actually create a 10x product experience to, yeah. as a combination. Yeah. That's true, and what we feel is that com doesn't come natural to us, right? So we are used to do work in a different way. With our traditional channels, we package stuff, so we sold, again, to what Adira said, peace of mind. So we find it very hard to not push our products through distribution into customers, right? Those from the industry know how difficult it is to change from a push model to a pull model. Now, partners like Gojek, and this is what we love about those partnerships, and that's the purpose of Allianz X investment philosophy. Yes, we pretty much are very confident this was a great financial investment. Mm -hmm. We're pretty confident about that. <laughs> but Fingers we crossed. do it not for that reason. We do it for strategic reasons. So Andre and his team pushes us to be better than what we used to be. They say, no, sorry, that's not good enough for our customers. That's not good enough for our drivers. We need this. Our market is different. So we want to go mass. We want to go to millions and millions in Indonesia that are not served through either bank or insurance. So that is what we think is a strategic impetus of those partnerships. And Gojek has been a fantastic partner in this sense also to challenge us along the way. And only this way we were able to, uh, to manufacture those processes. And I'm very keen and I would wish that your team challenges us going forward because only this way we can transform truly. Right. Yeah, I think um, um, uh, for sure. And what's interesting, uh, when, when you actually have that mindset of creating the best for your customer, then and again, if you decouple the journey from end to end, right, there's a lot of collaboration and of innovation that can be done uh, that, again, that creates the 10x experience, right? Um, even the simplest stuff, and that's actually all, also our approach when we ex expand to the rest of the Southeast Asia country, uh, because unlike in Indonesia, we started from ground zero, right? Uh, Indonesia, we've developed uh, this business for the last three and a half years, so uh, where we are today is already a, a long, long journey. Oh, yes. Now, um, you know, in recent days in Singapore, I think you know, all of you will have choice soon, so uh, be ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, actually, I'm actually a little bit scared because there's, there, there, there's a lot of demand <laughs> coming. Uh, but I think you know, we also uh, recently uh, announced a few partnerships here as well, including with uh, DBS. The intention is, very, is, is the same, right? Uh, one of the biggest pain for drivers is how do you actually get paid, right? So, you know, finding ways to reduce that friction, to make that very instantaneous experience, to make that claim, claim processing instantaneous experience, is the things that we wanted to work on as a basic. You know, there's, and then you can start building the base, right? Because then the engagement is there, uh, and you know, you know, consumer or drivers will be happy. And so, so innovation, in a sense, can start from uh, the smallest stuff. Uh, and I think the roles that every either a technology company or traditional company can bring uh, is actually uh, uh, definitely there. As long as the openness to see which part of the journey that can actually be decoupled and really like contributed by different partners is, is going to be established, right? Because I fully agree. And this is maybe a different phase we're entering also in this epic story of will the fintechs win over the corporates? Will the big fish eat the small fish or will the fast fish eat the slow fish? Right? Now, what we see evolving, at least from our perspective, also from an alliance perspective, is that we merge our stories and we begin understanding partnerships in a different way. And our uh, panel before, uh, the colleagues from B Capital also mentioned that it's going to be a story of not only the standalone insure techs starting to attack the big corporates, it's also about a creating enablers, so insurtechs are moving into an enabling status, and then those partnerships, like between your partners and yourselves, between us, they teach ourselves to go in symbiosis. So we have a lot to learn from each other. Now that's the business side of things. Quite a different story then is whether our technology and our systems are also talking to each other. And here, companies like Gojek are obviously 
f much more advanced than our legacy systems allow us to serve them. So we have to do a lot in our back office, in our backyards, to actually fix and design completely new systems from scratch and end to end in order to be able to serve via APIs and other technology means partners like Gojek. And this will eventually lead to a world where newcomers will exist with old ones as long as we all try to adapt to that new situation. But how is your views on that? Um, so I think, again, yeah, first of all, uh, if the openness to see which part can actually be, you know, rebuilt and, and, and make it much more innovative, then it's also easier to see where different partners can contribute to that ecosystem. I think uh, it's, you know, like the interaction with the Allianz team, um, both from the Indonesian team and kind of the, the headquarter team, um, is actually has been uh, a little bit uh, uh, exciting for us because, I mean, the uh, Allianz already lived for, what, 100 years? 129. 129 years, and to see kind of the, uh, the progression on the innovation um, part uh, is actually very exciting. Um, so, so I think, you know, maybe I can ask you a question, you know, maybe, uh, you know, directed to you. How, how, what, what, what was the decision and how did that decision being, you know, being made that you, you know, a company like 129 years old company could actually create this, uh, uh, a new legacy, if you may, yeah. uh, and uh, openness to actually embrace innovation and, and break everything and rebuild? Well, the, that's a fantastic question, and probably a question that not, not only touches to good old corporates like us in insurance, but then also to all kinds of both financial corporates and industry corporates. And I, during the last three years where I was tasked with actually thinking about how to transform such a company like Allianz, we thought a lot about that and I had a lot of discussions also with fellow chief digital officers and transformers. The challenges are always the same. One very clear red line we have is, as corporates, you cannot just break everything. We have to keep things going and moving to keep our shareholders happy and at the same time in parallel do the change. There was a lot of thinking also in our own thought process about how to balance the old with the new and what structures we need to build to get there. And we found that structures like Allianz X, which has a dedicated strategic target, not a financial return target, help us to get there. Because when you think about partnerships, the good old insurance partnerships, let's take the good old bank assurance deals that are still prevalent in bank distribution and life insurance. Well, I do see that sometime in the future, maybe a decade from now, these are going to be less and less. And we will rather have a partnership structure where we are forced to serve ourselves and our partners better. Yeah. Now, if you have this huge payments and then you have these commission things, you are bound by that legal construct. But in those relationships like ours, where we are not bound by any exclusivity, but we are bound by our ability to deliver to your customers, yep. right? as a service provider to your customers. So if we don't fit your customer journey, you just don't take us. Then you take someone else, and we have to live with that. Mm -hmm. And that forces us to do the best for you, and then this changes us. So this is one of the key dynamics that we understood over time. That doesn't come like this, but this is what we think is a key for us to get there. Mm -hmm. Do you see, like in the last three years, we have been um, working over the last three years in our partnership. Maybe a question from your angle. Do you see us learning from you? Do, do, do you <laughs> see that happening? <laughs> uh, well, well, tough question. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, definitely, I, I think, well, I Be mean, honest. yeah, yeah, no. Uh, the, the learning is actually uh, uh, goes both ways, right? Because remember that, again, we're not pretending that we know everything about insurance. We don't know how to, you know, calculate risk. We don't know how to calculate premium. Uh, you know, sometimes we just do things and then after it breaks, then, ah, oh, you know, now we know what's wrong. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, always a, it's a totally different journey. So I think definitely we learn a lot about uh, risk management and trying to actually <coughs> um, making sure that the end-to-end -end product solution really is the good one, right? Because sometimes we were so focused on the front end and the product design, but a lot of the operations, the way 
collections being made, how you manage risk, how you actually calculate risk, is something that is obviously uh, still a learning journey for us. And that's why this partnership is also very interesting. Hopefully, the other, you know, you, know you, you guys learn a lot from us as well because we are crazy, we like to do things fast, and sometimes, you know, having that mentality allow us to be, you know, fast and fearless in some sense, uh, and then creative in terms of uh, creating a product solution that is actually differentiated to the, to the consumer. Yes, yeah. that's great. Now, we are learning uh, at light speed, looking also into our, our good old history. But let me also then have an opening question to you because I'm pretty sure the audience is especially interested in uh, your strategic views on financial services more broadly. Mm -hmm. Also, besides our uh, partnership in Southeast Asia, on your views on the evolution of financial services in this region of the world, and maybe whatever you can share, your plans on your expansion. Sure. Um, I think uh, at Gojek, um, you know, again, as, as a reminder, we're not just a transport company. So we, we think ourselves as uh, you know, creating solutions for the consumer needs, daily needs, right? So the, the, word, the name of the game is really understanding the con consumer, right? Plotting their journey, finding their aha moments, uh, and really like building a long-term engagement model so that they are much more active and retentive, right? So in that aspect, then every types of verticals of product will fit in. It could be payments, it could be logistics product, O2O product, you know, it could be food, it could be like some marketing services and whatnot. It could also be financial services. So financial services is not just a word or a vertical that we, yeah, we think it's a differentiated, uh, so, but it's actually a way for us to then go back to our mission, which is basically creating the best consumer experience uh, for our consumers, right? Uh, so for, to give you an example, a very uh, perfect example for this is uh, if, you know, in Indonesia, many of our customers doesn't have a bank account, right? Uh, because bank account penetration is only 30, 35%. Um, and uh, many of, even like the way that wallet today is being um, done is actually through a prepaid wallet, right? It's a top-up function. Even direct debit, you know, uh, link to card hasn't really been established. Uh, so there's always a friction. Yes, the wallet usage is super, super easy, but there's always a friction. Our average customer of GoPay uh, top up six times a month, uh, average, right? The, the largest users, users of GoPay are doing top up twice a, twice a week, right? So there's that six times friction. Then we, we thought about it and we created this thing called PayLater, which is basically an overdraft, in some sense like credit card. Uh, in some sense, right? Because you can use your GoPay balance and you pay it at the end of the month. And it's not for financial services, it's actually to reduce friction, yes. right? Uh, and again, you know, the, the impact out of that product has actually significantly increased the, uh, the wallet use and the kind of the spend of that particular group of users that we actually targeted. So it has been a successful consumer experience and likewise, because there's a balance sheet component to it, then we've, we've been actually been talking to a lot of the, our banking partners, financial institutions, to really uh, help with the balance sheet management, right? Because again, we're not a financial institution, but we really wanted to create that, the whole journey and then decouple it, right? Uh, we created product, the, the design of the product, but then we wanted to work with people that can actually help us managing the balance sheet and, and, and managing the risk, right? So that, that partnership, you know, like mindset has always been established because again, you know, we understand that we are not the best of everything and there are people that knows more about the value chain than us, but, but, uh, but we, obviously we, we have a lot of things to offer as well. So, so that's kind of the, the overall concept. Obviously uh, in Indonesia, everything is much more mature given um, obviously the three and a half years journey that we've been having. Uh, for the rest of Southeast Asia, um, you know, obviously we're building from ground zero and uh, the kind of the approach will continue to be the same, um, but it probably in a, in a different pace, right? That's great. Now, thanks for these insights. Time is up, unfortunately, and we don't, did not plan for Q&A. I know you have thousands of questions. Maybe uh, you try to catch us while running out. <laughs> 
Um, thank you very much, Andre, um, you. for your time. Thanks for the audience to listen to us. Thank you very much, gentlemen.